We picked up this piece off of KSL Classified. It's pretty roached. It's coming apart. We're gonna show you how to turn it into a functional piece of furniture. It's got lots of chippy veneer. Most of it is just coming right off because this lived outside for a while. So we're gonna remove all of the veneer that's loose, sand it down smooth. Zeb's going to replace this foot and the front piece here, we have all the parts. And then we're going to strap down with metal straps underneath here to pull this warp top down and make it a little bit more structurally sound. The cool part is the inside is cedar. It's still in fairly decent shape. It has the original key and the original paperwork from Montgomery Ward. The trim along these edges is actually in decent shape. It hasn't swollen or expanded from being exposed to moisture or out in the elements. So I think once we get rid of this veneer, it'll be pretty easy to paint up. So Jack is supposed to be in bed. You can see he's in his pajamas, but he snuck out here into the garage because he loves building. What are we doing to this, Jack? We are gonna sew, sew this to the shop. Yeah. I'm gonna try to save this detail. It's up on top of the veneer. I think it's been nailed in right here, so like six nails. Hey! Won that one. While I'm peeling up veneer, I have the front piece of the leg here that's missing, and I also have the foot that's missing under here to keep this from wobbling. So what I'm gonna do is, while I'm peeling veneer, I'm gonna get this gluing up. So the foot for that side is also snapped in half. I've got a healthy dose of glue on here and I'm going to clamp these together. I'm using Type Bond 2 and the glue manufacturer recommends that I let this set up for 24 hours before I put anything load bearing on. Since it's going to be the foot on the bottom of this cedar chest, it definitely is going to be load bearing. So I'm going to let it rest for 24 hours and just hang out. I'll probably even maybe put like a dowel or two through there to help reinforce that and glue that in as well. Right here, I've got some veneer that is actually glued down really well. It doesn't want to peel up. If you run into that when you're peeling veneer, a heat gun and a putty knife make quick work of that. Another trick, if you don't have a heat gun, just about everybody's got a clothes iron. You just put it on the cotton setting without any water in it and just, this is a little slower than the heat gun. Basically, you just wanna heat that up and reactivate that glue, get that glue soft and, and pliable again. So most of the veneer is off, as you can see from the aftermath on the floor. I did break out the sander and just sand this smooth. This was real stubborn, it wasn't coming off with the iron or the heat gun. So I just sanded it pretty smooth. We're gonna give it a pretty chippy paint job anyway, so it's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull off all of the hardware and the hinges and then completely remove this lid so that I can work on it and put some good pressure on it. All right, so I'm gonna measure this square stock from the front of that line that I just drew when the lid was closed. Back to right there. I may have to trim it down a little more. I'm going to just use an angle grinder to zip that off, but it should work. Now I'm drilling 532nd holes along the half inch square tubing, and I'm going through both sides with this. And then I come back in with a 3 8 on the top. That way my screw head can fit down through and I can get maximum depth. Now I know some people are going to be like, Zeb, why didn't you rebuild the top out of plywood? and then just put that trim back on it because it would have been really easy. And my answer is, yes, that would have been really easy, but I got this idea in my head to save this cedar lining on the inside 
and now I'm stuck doing it the hard way because I'm committed. So what I'm doing is I'm clamping this side down. I'm gonna clamp this side down. Hopefully that pulls some of the bow out of this piece. And then I'm gonna run these number eight by three quarter inch screws down in through these holes that I've drilled and hopefully that'll pull everything flat. Okay, I'm gonna do that along the whole thing, then I'm gonna start screwing them in. Okay, let's see what the top looks like. That's a lot flatter. I'm using 18 gauge nails, and this will help this stay square. All right, so this foot is about done being clamped up. I'm gonna add some dowels to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a dowel through here and up through the top. That way it'll give it a little added strength and hopefully won't split again. I don't wanna just rely on the glue up job since it is a foot and it'll be load bearing. Okay, so I've got my two holes drilled. These are just 3 8 holes probably a little bigger than I needed, but it was the dowel I had on hand. So now I'm just going to run my dowel down in, kind of twisting it so that the glue gets all over. Got a little bit extra glue, I'm gonna wipe that off. Now that that's in there, I'm gonna run this over, zip it off on the bandsaw, run another one in, and that'll be ready to go. Just gonna screw these hinges back in real quick and hope that they stay tight. They were pretty tight before, so fingers crossed everything is good. So the foot goes right there like that, and it had a pretty serious screw. This will hold a lot of weight. I'm gonna use this and put this back in. I'm gonna add a little glue for everything here. Just help keep everything tight once everything's set. I don't know that it had glue before, but it does now. All right, once that glue sets up, that thing's not coming off. And because of the dowels in there, I'm not really worried about it splitting or breaking again. It should be good. We wanna go super chippy with this piece, so I'm not gonna use any Sweet Pickens Extra Bond but I am going to be using the Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and I cleaned out my cabinet. I don't know if you guys watched that video, but I'm trying to use up all my leftover bits and pieces. So I'm going to mix up Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and Patina. I've got two bags of that. I'm not really sure how much is in here, but I've got my measuring cup and then I have Sweet Pickens Bluebird. I'm using a measuring cup because I want to make sure that I add the right amount of water. You want to mix one part milk paint to one part warm water. So I measured out four scoops of the milk paint, so I'm gonna do four scoops of the warm water. You can go ahead and mix it up with a whisk. I prefer to use an immersion blender. I feel like it gives you the best results. I get asked all the time, like my milk paint has chunks in it, how do I fix that? Two things, warm water, immersion blender. Well, actually three, because once I mix it up, I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes to really dissolve, and then we'll be ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this painted. We've wiped it down, removed any dust and grease. We've not used bond because this is super dry, so I'm not even, we did not use extra bond because this is super dry, so I'm not even sure if it's going to chip. I could spray it with lacquer and that would help it chip some more, but I'm just going to go and see what happens. I'm using my one and three quarter paint pixie brush because it holds the most paint and I can get this painted pretty quickly. The first coat of milk paint doesn't look super great, but the second coat will probably give us enough coverage that we'll be ready to distress. This brush is oval shaped, but it still gets in details. Sometimes I just go the opposite direction real quick to get in all the cracks and then just smooth it right on out. I'm going for a super chippy look, so I'm not super concerned that the first coat isn't dry. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the second coat 
If you want it a little more pristine or you're worried about pulling the paint back up, wait a full two hours for it to dry. I don't care if it's perfect because I'm gonna distress off a lot of this paint anyways. So really I'm just making sure that the second coat covers it so that way there's not streaks from my paintbrush. We didn't get any chipping, but that's okay because I've got an orbital sander and 220 sandpaper. So we're gonna see if we can coerce a little bit of chippy distress. We've removed all the dust and we're ready to wax. I'm gonna be using white wax because there's a little bit of yellow tannins coming through the wood through my paint. So the white wax should neutralize that a little bit. And I'm just gonna come through and do the edges and details. I'm not gonna do the centers. Zeb's gonna follow behind me with the clear wax and then we're gonna give it a good buff. Then Zeb's gonna give it a good buff. Okay, Zeb's gonna give it a good buff because I have another project to work on. I'm using my DIY white wax and my paint pixie wax brush. So I'm just coming back with the DIY clear wax right over the top of that white wax to kind of soften the brush strokes and blend it in more into the details. It doesn't take a lot of clear wax because you're gonna get some white wax on there too. So you just need a little bit to grab it to kind of break that up. All right, so because Jamie's only hitting it in some spots, I have to come back with the clear wax and get the whole piece and soften up what she's done with the brush strokes. That way it gets sealed all over the whole piece. We're gonna buff this as soon as we're done. Then we'll put on another coat of clear wax, let that sit overnight, and then we'll buff it to a little bit of a sheen tomorrow, and that will make it really well sealed. I just wanna make sure that this poor piece of furniture that was left outside for who knows how long has some more life left in it. So I had this sitting over on the workbench and we almost forgot to put it back on. A little piece was dried out and chipped, so I'll just glue that. It's basically like an applique. Okay, so I've just got a microfiber towel. We, we usually just use lint-free rags. This will work. So I'm pretty sure that this was destined for probably the dump. Like she was selling it on KSL. I saw it had good bones, but I'm not sure how many people would have been like, yeah, I wanna buy that. <laughs> It was a little bit of work just to get it structurally sound enough so that Jamie could be able to sit on it like this. But now we know if I can sit on it, then it's good to go. We can sell it. Yeah. Because it's a really unique, cool piece. So I probably put about two hours of repairs into it. It's a little more than we like to do. Normally we like to stick right around like half an hour, an hour of repairs and then go to painting. But something like this, it's cool. It'll be an easy sell because it's really unique. We don't see cedar chests like this often. Especially with the feet. And I love the way the milk paint turned out. It didn't chip on its own, but with the 220, I kind of coerced it and it's got a little bit of a chippy look going to it. The white wax adds to the age and makes it look like a blended paint finish. But instead of doing it with paint, we're just doing it with white and clear wax. Yeah. So this Saturday, October 27th, 2018, we are going to be at the DIY Life Expo talking about this piece, our other flip that we did with the white dresser with the flowers and a piece that you've never before seen talking about how to make money flipping furniture at 10:30 at the sandy expo center we'll drop the link for the event below so that way you can get all the information here's a rundown of the products that we use we use sweet pickens and patina and bluebird we just mix together some leftovers about two parts patina to one part bluebird and then we sealed it with white wax, clear wax, and we used Paint Pixie's wax brush and Paint Pixie's one and three quarter brush. That's it, that's how we got this look. Be sure to pick all those up at jamierayvintage.com. So if you're really into furniture repair, share the video. We got tons of tips and tricks in this video. Don't forget to hit that notifications button so you don't miss any of our flips and DIY videos. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.